always one of maintaining control, even in a post-agreement uh, situation with two sovereign states. And you know, the, the outcome would be something more like a, a protectorate or a mandate and not a sovereign state, given the way the Israelis see, see the, 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 the negotiation, uh, negotiations on security. Now, um, the Palestinian requirements for, uh, on the security front from Israel is, of course, first and foremost, a full military withdrawal uh, to the 1967 border, or as with the agreed minor modifications, uh, of the military withdrawal of course, includes uh, the airspace and control over the frequencies of the electromagnetic sphere. Um, Palestinian state would require an effective security force, um, you know, a force that is able to maintain law and order, to defend the borders against infiltration, in order to maintain also the basic defenses of the state. Um, and of course, uh, we seek uh, peaceful relations based on regional cooperation mechanisms. Um, and um, we've also uh, been seeking an international presence, including an international force, uh, in part to meet our own needs for capacity building and training, at least in the transitional period, uh, but also to allay Israeli concerns that there will be a vacuum in uh, the ability to maintain control and to enforce law and order after their withdrawal. Uh, the obstacles are... <laughs> Um, the fact that, again, as I pointed out earlier, the Israelis don't quite see a distinction between the existing situation of their occupation and their relation with a sovereign neighbor, a state living in peace and security next to them. So um, the Israelis demand an overriding military presence and control, such as having control over the eastern border with Jordan, control over the airspace, including civil aviation, control over parts of the electromagnetic sphere, placement of early warning stations, uh, the right to deploy their forces under certain circumstances on Palestinian territory, which in total amounts to a de facto continuation, or actually a continuation by consent of their military control over Palestinian territory and the lives of Palestinians. Um, and in, to further add to the, the problem we have, these obstacles, is their insistence on Palestine being a demilitarized state. So uh, restrictions on the ability of Palestine to have anything more than uh, a police force. This is highly problematic in the sense that these days, you know, um, from what we see in the instability in the region, there is a need to maintain law and order and to prevent uh, certain groups from, you know, carrying out certain activities. And that's an essential component of, of sovereignty and the ability to have a monopoly on the use of force. Um, and, you know, so those are the two elements that basically prevent Palestine from having full sovereignty and being able to exercise control over its territory. Um, and, you know, we see this reflected, this attitude in the negotiations on the situation on the ground where the attempt of the Palestinian Authority security forces to uh, perform the roadmap obligations of disarming militant groups and reforming the security services and agencies and deploying in certain parts of the West Bank. Uh, we see the Israelis uh, interfering with the ability of the Palestinian security forces to do their job by having incursions and uh, basically uh, not engaging in meaningful cooperation um, on the security front. So I will move on to a, a quick summary since I think we went on a bit too long. Um, as my colleagues said earlier, um, we have um, embraced the, uh, the process from Annapolis and we've made serious and extensive uh, efforts in the negotiations as well as on internal reform. Uh, these two things go together. and. Um, it is, you know, on the on the positive side, uh, we can note that for the first time, uh, as as Man pointed out, uh, Israel is at the negotiation table uh, and is engaged in at least uh, in, in in all the issues, even though you know we we are still to see any, you know, serious uh, serious engagement. Yet they are on the table. Um, Again, also the international community is now more involved through international missions like General Jones, General Dayton, General Fraser, and Tony Blair. Um, and so there is a deep engagement of the international community. And I would note also that uh, we have, you know, as you saw from the from the all parts of the presentation, we have attempted to put on the table um, meaningful um, propositions that take into account that are flexible, that take into account um, the Israeli concerns as you. You know, for example, about the land swaps, uh, the um, implementation of the refugees' right of return, and uh, security arrangements with the international presence, um, etc. 
So, as you know, we said there has been really um, the Israeli position has been undermining the situation on the ground and really not coming forward to the table with constructive um, responses to our pro proposals. So, I mean, not to sound too negative, but time is running out on this chance for a historic agreement by the end of 2008. Regardless, the Palestinians are committed to uh, peace through negotiations and to carrying out reforms regardless because it is in our interest. And, um, and this is something that, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have to deal with, you know, in case the, the process leads uh, to a dead end, at least we will continue to seek a peaceful solution to the conflict and to uh, conduct the reforms that are needed to build a future Palestinian state.